Gentlemen, welcome back to Becoming a Better Man. I'm Eli. And today, I have a very interesting uh, Reddit posting to go over regarding a gentleman that posed the question, does the quality of online dating profiles slash matches decline over time? Hmm. Very interesting question, but a great question. Let me share my thoughts about this very briefly um, through my experiences in the past, um, and then we'll get to the posting and some of the comments there and see what we can make out of this. Uh, in my opinion, it's a fact for me. I'm actually seeing someone right now. I met someone a couple of months ago, and uh, one of the primary sites I use is Match.com. I honestly feel that Match.com to this day is still the absolute best site if you're looking for an actual relationship because there's a full there's a full blown profile aspect, which is what I'm trying to say. Uh, I mean, there is like a swiping aspect of it as well, like most dating sites slash apps have done. But on Match, there's still a traditional aspect of where you can search for profiles and that uh, you can read full length profiles and see as many pictures as the user decides to upload. But I've been on Match.com for over 15 years and maybe even closer to 20 years. And um, my last, I would say my last four relationships have been from Match.com. And I've also used other dating sites. I've used OkCupid. I've used Plenty of Fish, which I feel those sites suck now. Okay, Cupid and Plenty of Fish are like hookup sites with lots of spammers out there. Um, now, we also have Hinge and we also have uh, Bumble nowadays, which I think are probably the next best apps to use, um, you know, outside of Match.com. I was using them, uh, you know, before I found this lady I'm with. Um but even on those apps, um, there are a lot of flaky people on there. And I'm not saying that there aren't flaky people on Match. There are, but there are, you know, fewer flaky people on Match.com because both men and women have to pay for it to access it fully. Whereas on these other, you know, apps, there's a free aspect, which is what most people use. Um, so, uh, in my opinion, uh, from what I've seen as a fact, um, over the last 15, 20 years, um, I've seen the same women uh, with different pictures. Uh, maybe they've, you know, gone on some dates. They've had some short-term relationships. But it's been really interesting to me over the last 15, 20 years that uh, I've been on Match before I met this woman. Um, I saw hundreds of the same types of women and I had interacted with them in the past and it wasn't the greatest interaction and it doesn't um, doesn't um, how do I say it's the right way uh, I'm not surprised which is what I'm trying to say that they're still out there right um, so yeah the quality of you know uh, you know uh, matches and profiles does deteriorate over time and it also depends on where you live i live in the san francisco bay area so there are a lot of people here right there are a lot of people here right but in your area you might live in a small town or a small county and your options are much more limited i'll even say this even uh at the point right before i met this woman i'm with right now and i was talking to some other women even here in the Bay Area, after being on the site for like, you know, 15 plus years, and I weeded through most of the, the women, um, my options were getting scarce. So I'm kind of glad I found, I'm really glad I found this woman. But yeah, I get where this guy is coming from. Let's switch on over to the browser source and let's see uh, what, this, uh, what this guy has to say. Let's switch on over. There we go. This is from the subreddit, Dating Over 30, and the original poster states, does the quality of OLD, online dating profiles, forward slash matches, really decline over time? Okay. Let's see what he wrote. I downloaded Hinge three months ago to give 
online dating a shot and it recommended a lot of attractive guys to me. Oh, this is a woman writing this. Okay. The likes you pool alone had sufficient guys for me to go out on dates with a few of them. Well, what Hinge does is over the first week to two weeks, they, they, um, they, uh, put your profile, um, how, how do I say this? In like super mode. They, um, they overly promote your profile to get you hooked. So you get a ton of responses. And after that, it'll never be the same. They do that to hook you so you can actually pay for the, the, the platform, um, after that period of two weeks where they're super promoting your profile and highlighting it. Um, and they're trying to get you to think that, um, it's going to get you the same, uh, traction if you pay for it. And before I had met this, uh, this woman that I'm with now, and I was on Hinge at that point, uh, I did pay for it for a month and it never was as good as the first two weeks were. I think that's what you're experiencing here. Our conversations were engaging. They were charming and brought their A game, but things didn't progress further with any of them for a variety of reasons. Some were my fault. Some guys turned out not to be serious or had bad character deficiencies. Well, you know, women are very picky nowadays too, man. Maybe you were a little bit picky. Maybe most of these guys you encountered were decent guys, made good money, but they just weren't your physical type. That's typically what the issue is. Um, maybe you had some great phone conversations and maybe you liked their picture, but when you met in person, they catfished you. I mean, that's a possibility that happens, but yeah, women have so many options nowadays that, um, you know, ma'am, I hate to say it. I'm, I'm sure you passed up on some guys that could have been a decent fit just because they were slightly less attractive than what you typically would go after. That's what a lot of women do nowadays. But my impression was that these men were clearly making the effort to be attractive on our dates, and that's at least commendable. Well, if that's commendable, ma'am, then why don't you give them a chance? Because you're damn picky. Because you're, you're, you're saying to yourself, well, if I can get this guy and he's trying and he's, you know, looking okay, maybe I can get someone better. Ma'am, it sounds like to me that uh, you had some pretty good guys that came your way uh, and you just wanted to keep on exploring what was out there. You're, you're getting caught up in the excitement of what happens on Hinge the first two weeks. You get a ton of connections. They do that on purpose to get you hooked on the app. So it's back to the drawing board, though I noticed that the quality of suggested profiles and matches declines the longer I use the app. Like I said, ma'am, and I researched this myself, you know, many, many months ago when I was on the app before I met the woman I'm with right now. And basically, after a couple of weeks, for the first two weeks or so, we can have for two weeks, they promote the heck out of your profile, they highlight it, um, and you get... 50 or 100 matches, even if you're a guy. And guys typically don't get that on other sites. They do that because they want you to think that that's how it's going to continue being if you end up paying for it. And I did end up paying for it for one month, and it didn't make a difference whether I had paid for it or not. It'll never be as good as those first two weeks. That's the truth of the matter. When more and more people find out about how Hinge works, they're going to use it for two weeks, and then they're just not going to use it. They're not going to pay for it. Unless Hinge changes their algorithm. By decline, I mean guys whose profiles already have questionable stuff in it. Um, negging, sorry, negging things like if you don't look like your profile photos, you're buying the drinks. Took me a while to get it. Or guys who put their workplace as the Ministry of Magic or Ask Me or guys whose main profile photo, the sports car steering wheel with a Rolex on their wrist. Well, man, you know a lot of those profiles are fabricated, but women do the same thing too. You know, when I was in the dating world, uh, when I was in the, on, on the, in the dating market using these apps, um, I would avoid those profiles. I can tell the profiles where people are trying too hard or are being fake. So, ma'am, you got to just use your common sense and just ignore those profiles. If you're talking to guys like that, you're only asking for what you just for what you're you're dealing with, ma'am. That's the truth of the matter. 
Strangely, it also recommends people I'm pretty sure I've swiped left on at least twice. Some guys I've chatted with also make new profiles with the same photos to game the algorithms. So it's a lot of deja vu. Well, yeah, if Hinge catches on that you're using more than one account um, to try to get that super boost everyone gets the first couple of weeks, um, they will delete all your accounts. So, you know, I would just ignore those profiles, man. Uh, quite frankly, if I was you, I would go on the Match.com or maybe even eHarmony as maybe the next best one. eHarmony does have a pretty extensive process until you get to open communication. I haven't used it in a very, very long time. But if you're looking for something real, Match.com and, uh, and um, you know, what do you call it, uh, eHarmony. These other apps, there are going to be a lot of games on there. I mean, you, you can find some decent people. Even on, you know, uh, even on, uh, what do you call it, Bumble or Hinge. And the interesting thing is when I was, uh, you know, seeking for somebody before I found this, this woman I've been with for a couple of months, I'd see a lot of the same people on Match.com, Hinge, and Bumble. It's, it's, it's just funny. It's funny. So, <laughs> anyway. Uh, even though I'm terrible at figuring out apps, I downloaded Tinder and Coffee Meets Bagel. To try and broaden my dating pool. I tried Coffee Meets Bagel, you know, last year. I didn't get anything out of it. I think it's crap. But maybe you might have a better, um, you know, experience with it. Who knows? It was the same. Random profiles and dozens of people I know wouldn't be a good match with me. I'm sure if I have just gotten better uh, at vetting profiles and shrank my own opinions. Sorry, shrank my own options. Or I'm having... A bad luck run or encounter the wrath of the algorithm gods. Man, it's kind of like a weirdly written run on sentence. Uh, but I get what you're saying there. Um, yeah, these companies, they're in it to make money. And they are going to try to keep you on the platform by just bombing you with as many connections as possible in the first week or two. And in order to do that, I mean, half the people, even more than half the people they connect you with are not going to be the right fit. And quite frankly, you never know if someone's, you know, right for you until you communicate with them. You just never know. Ma'am, I would just take it with a grain of salt and just, uh, you know, if you connect with somebody, say hello, see how the conversation is, take a look at their profile. If it feels right, continue. If not, just block them and move on to the next. And stop wasting your time. You know, people that complain about this stuff are just wasting their time um, when they can just put themselves back out there and talk to someone else that might be that right person. Chats with matches are also dry these days, and they take way too long to reply. That's because everyone has a lot of options. That's the problem with these swipe left and swipe right sites. That's why. I say go to Match.com or eHarmony, okay, where it's more of a, hey, you see someone's profile, you can like their profile, and then you can send them a message, and then they have the option to respond to you or not, you know? I mean, people have way too many options, which is why it takes people a long time to respond, and people typically will respond to the person they feel the most physical attraction to initially and has a decent profile as well at the same time. So if you're not getting a response right away from people that you've matched with and stuff like that, okay, uh, all it means is that you're not their top choice. Don't sit around and wait to see if you become their top choice. Just keep moving forward, right? Or use a different app. Like, stop swiping left and right. Go to Match.com. Go to eHarmony. Go to some other dating sites that um, are less about swiping left and right and more about the written profile and stuff like that. There are still sites out there like that. I'm comparing it to my early Hinge days when the guys were a lot more engaging and eager to drive the momentum. That's because all of us guys tried Hinge one time and we had some success of connecting with people for the first two weeks. And then even if we paid for it, the algorithm never, ever, you know, bombed us with that many connections again. So we felt kind of jipped and we left. 
that's what happened. Everyone initially got on the hinge because they heard about the algorithm boost. And after the, the two-week period, boom, people are gone. So maybe you should go too and go to a different site. I honestly think Hinge is not going to last that long unless they change their algorithm. I think what they're going to do is they're going to change their service once they, you know, stop making money doing what they've been doing, which is bombing people with connections for the first two weeks, right? You, you know, highlighting and, and, and blowing up their profile for two weeks and then completely cutting them off after that and leading them to believe that if they pay for the service, they're going to get that same traction, which they never do. Let's see. So, yeah, like she says, I'm comparing it to my early hinge days when the guys were a lot more engaging and eager to drive the momentum. I'm someone who is very at ease with talking to people and bringing up chat topics. So it felt like hitting a wall here. Well, yeah, you went through all the best matches initially, and now you've got the bottom of the barrel. That's telling you it's time to move on to another platform. In this Sorry, is this par for the course for online dating? On some sites, it is, especially the swipe left and swipe right ones. Okay, you need to switch dating sites. You need to go to a different dating site that is more about viewing someone's entire profile and more than just you know physical attraction. You you want to go to a dating site where you can truly get to know someone. I'm frankly amazed. When some guys told me they had been using dating apps for seven years or longer, and it daunts me that I might possibly experience the same thing. Well, whether people use online dating sites or not, you're not going to find that special person right away. And even if we didn't have the internet nowadays, do you think uh, you're going to, you know, uh, it would be easy to just walk into a bar and find the love of your life one night? No, you might get lucky and find them that one night or it might take you going out for the next year or two and meeting different people to find the right one online dating is no different the difference is the only difference is people can represent themselves in any way that they want with what they write and the pictures they put out there um and 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 the problem is that's called catfishing people are going to see that you're different when they meet you so my advice is to be honest online but there really is no difference uh, between online dating and offline dating than what I just mentioned. It's the people can represent themselves in any way possible on online dating. Uh, in the real world, you can't hide anything because you're right there in person, right? And people can ask you questions right there and you don't have time to write back a fake response. You have to respond initially or, you know, boom, that person's going to be like, okay, well, they can't answer my question. I'm going to walk away and talk to somebody else. That's just the way it goes. All right. We're at 18 minutes. Let's go down and read some of the comments here and see what was written here. Do, 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 do. The algorithms will often present you a certain level of options in the beginning and then adjust recommendations. That's a bullshit way of saying they bomb you with the most connections during the first two weeks and lead you to believe that that is going to continue happening if you end up paying for the site. So, you know, these sites, when I was on them in the past, even after that two-week period on Hinge, yeah, they would make recommendations for me, and the majority of them were women I was not attracted to, not only physically, but I didn't like what they wrote in their profiles. I mean, how are they going to know, you know, what I what I like or who I like based off of a swipe left and a swipe right? Come on now. There's not enough data there, right? There's no real way you can recommend two people to connect. Uh, because attraction is based on an individual level, right? This is what they lead you to believe. So that way, you know, they can continue pulling their scam on everyone. Again, the first week and a half or two weeks on Hinge is going to be the best that we'll ever get. And after that, it will never be the same whether you pay for it or not. Original poster, I wonder how the adjustment works and why the apps thinks why the app thinks I'm interested in their current selection. I asked the same thing, original poster. 
I mean, how can the how can the algorithm tell who you're best suited with based off of swiping left and swiping right? They're based it completely on physical attraction. They're not taking, you know, the mental and emotional bond and spiritual connection into consideration. There's a lot more to it than just the physical stuff. I think it's that people with good profiles naturally get the most likes. No, people with the best pictures do. People with the hottest pictures. If you look good, take care of yourself, you get instant, uh, you know, uh, attention. That's just the way it goes. And those are the people whom the algorithms show new users first. Over time, it shows you the lesser like profiles, which are the crummier profiles. No, they, they show you whatever is left. What they do on Hinge is they bomb you with the best profiles you will ever see the first two weeks free of charge. And then they try to suck you into buying their app, thinking that that is going to get you that same type of traction that you initially got, which it never will. I think that uh, Hinge, I hate to say it, I think it's, I think it's a scam. I think it's... Um, I'm not saying that there aren't people you you uh, uh, can meet out there. There are people you can meet, sure, right? But I, I think that the way Hinge is running their company, doing this with the algorithm, first two weeks, and then it's crappier people for the rest of the time after that, I think that's going to put them out of business uh, eventually. Or maybe they have a plan to change their algorithm once they notice that their revenue is drying up. Because more and more people are figuring out this game. I think that could be the case because what I'm shown now versus when I first downloaded the app is worlds apart. Yeah, because of what I just said. And despite indicating my preferences in my settings, I'm still frequently shown people whom I absolutely don't want to date. Right. Right. Again, the first two weeks, they bomb you with the most attractive profiles, physically appealing profiles. That's what they do, right? They bomb you with those people, and, and then they basically um, they basically show your profile over and over again to, to all the women for like the first week and a half or two weeks that you're on the app. And then after that, boom, it's just crap. <clears throat> on match, I seriously was suggested a match whose profile picture looked like a guy sleeping on the subway on his way to the hospital. WTF, is there an in a coma setting I forgot about? Yeah, you know what, folks? You really can't sit there and let these recommendations bother you. The reason why they have the recommendation on there, it's just another reason to send you an email to get you back on to the app or the site. That's all it is. If you folks don't waste your time trying to figure out all this crap that these dating sites are trying to do to keep you on their platform longer and to get you to pay for more of their services, if you just focus on finding the right person, okay, um, you'll eventually find it. It won't happen right away, but it will happen at some point. You will find someone. You just have to ignore all the crap they send you and just focus on what you're seeking, right? On match, you can do searches, you know, you can do a search radius, you can do height, you can do weight. Um, I think, uh, is it, can you do weight? Yeah, you can do height, uh, not weight, sorry. You can do height, you can do body type, which is the same thing as weight. Uh, you can do ethnicity, um, radius search, um, all that stuff, right? And you could do an age range as well, too. On these other apps, yeah, they have, uh, you know, some settings you can, uh, you can select, but honestly, it just basically is not even gonna, gonna use those settings. They're just gonna recommend you what the algorithm wants to recommend you, especially during the first two weeks, like on Hinge. So yeah, just use match.com, put in your search criteria. Um, and, you know, look for people, look for men or women in your area, uh, that you like their pictures and you like their profile and keep messaging people until you find one that it just flows with. If it flows, take it to the phone, 
um, if close to the, the messaging, you know, app or, you know, the site, uh, take it to the phone. And then after that, if it, if it feels right, meet in person and take it from there. That's it. We are at 25 minutes. We're going to wrap this up in just a few. The original poster writes in response, that's hilarious. Maybe he's a sleeping beauty waiting for that kiss to wake him up. Well, maybe. That's a, you know what? That's a pretty good, that's a good way to look at it, man. That's a good way to humor all of us because, you know, we've all, we've all been through the crap of online dating. And now a lot of these new dating apps, they're making it about, you know, how can we make the most money by leading people to believe they're going to get more action if they pay for our services, which on, on the apps that have a free aspect, they typically, um, will not get you any more traction, uh, if you end up paying for the premium aspect of it. Now, if you're on match.com, you need to pay for the premium aspect. It isn't worth it. But the other apps like Bumble and Hinge, um, and, and the other ones, no, the, the premium is not, not freaking worth it on those sites. Not, in my opinion, it's not. That's why there are guys who tend to delete their profile and make New one exactly the same to get the pool of best profiles again and again. Yeah, but on Hinge, they'll catch on to that and then they'll delete your profile and they'll ban you. They'll ban your ISP and you will not be able to get on there. You got to be real careful. Got to be real careful with that. You've probably just already seen all the good options already. Haha. <laughs> no, it's true. It's true. Like I mentioned earlier, before I met the woman I'm seeing now, I've been on Match for like 15 plus years. And trust me, I, I had gone through over the last 15 years, practically the majority of the women that were on Match uh, within a 100 mile radius. At least the ones that I was attracted to. Now what's left is just, oh my God, I, I, I don't want to be rude, but I mean, a lot of these women, they don't even put full body pictures on there. They don't smile. Like, what are they trying to hide, right? Um, you got women in their early to mid thirties that look like they're 60. Like, I mean, that's what's left. No disrespect. I mean, at some point on every site, uh, based on your, you know, radius, your search radius, however many miles your radius is, you're gonna eventually hit the wall with it. Just go to a different site. That's it. Which app are you using? I find that OkCupid is the worst for this. OkCupid okay, and Plenty of Fish are not as good as they used to be over 10 years ago. They're hookup sites and spam sites now. Do not use them. I have my preferences set to be close to my location and age, and it'll show me people 10 years younger and a state over. That's because the, the number of people on those apps has declined greatly in the last 5 to 10 years. They used to be two of the most popular apps next to Match. But now it's Match.com, it's Hinge, it's uh, it's Bumble. People are still on Tinder. Tinder sucks. It's a complete hookup site for people that are extremely attractive. They're the only ones that get any action on there. And it's not for relationships, really. Okay? Um, so, yeah, I mean, look, if you want to find a real good person to date, Match.com and eHarmony. Yes, you can find decent people on Hinge and bumble but there are still there are a lot more flakes on there and women do get a lot more attention on there than men and so you know if you're a guy um you know it's it's going to be much more difficult for you especially the guy to make a connection on bumble or hinge um on match probably a little bit easier because uh, it's more of a serious uh you know profile type of uh site slash app that's just my opinion. All right, we are at 29 minutes. Let me just read one more here from the original poster. Um, and then we're going to wrap this up. I was primarily using Hinge, found the other apps too confusing, and Match was irritatingly aggressive in promotion. Yeah, they all promote, dude. Yes, Match does aggressively promote. But they are one of the best sites, and don't let their promotions, their promos, 
get in the way of you using one of the best apps out there to find what you're looking for. Yes, I get people out of my age range and religion preferences as well. These are algorithms that are trying to predict human behavior, which is at an individual basis. So you guys are getting ticked off. You guys and gals are getting ticked off at computers that were programmed by humans to try to predict what you want. They're not going to always get it right. They're going to rarely get it right. Just ignore it and do it yourself. I even got a guy who wanted a woman who shares my faith, but described himself as spiritual but not religious in his profile. Seriously, WTF, spiritual but not religious is a very common thing. There are a lot of people um, that uh, are spiritual uh, and may or may not believe in God, um, but they're not religious. And when they say they're spiritual, um, you know, uh, they're, they're a good person. They just don't believe in God pretty much is what it means. And they don't believe in going to church and stuff like that to, to be able to, uh, you know, to, to, to have spirituality, which is what I'm trying to say. So that is that. Yeah. Let me, uh, let me go back to, we're at, uh, 31 minutes. Let me go back to full screen. And just say this, look, guys and gals, I've talked a lot about online gaming, especially on my main channel that I really haven't promoted here yet. My main channel is Coach Eli, C-O-A-C-H space Eli, E-L-I, um, Elias Mellis, E-L-I-A-S-M-E-L-A-S. I've talked a lot about online dating and this stuff. Um, and quite honestly, online dating is, uh, is about whatever you make it to be, right? Don't get caught up in the BS. Don't get caught up in the promotions. Uh, don't get upset if someone doesn't respond to you. Put yourself out there and go on with your day, right? And every now and then out of the blue, somebody will get back to you, even if you're a guy, and you start talking when you can. And if it progresses naturally, take it to the phone. If that feels great and progresses into meeting and then you meet and that feels great, then keep moving forward. Don't sit there and let online dating consume you. You control your online dating. Don't let online dating control you. And I promise you, you'll have great success in the long run. You'll find that special person in due time. Maybe not right away, but in due time, if you're patient, um, you will find that special person. Hope you got value from this video. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, bang the bell, select the notifications, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.